my god, this bike is fast. Oh, I feel like I just unlocked a new level. What's up guys? So in my last video, the bike check of the Clash, I mentioned how I was gonna be turning it into a mullet. Now, I know mullets are super trendy right now, and as you could tell in the intro, I'm super excited about mine and how it's riding. However, there's a few words of caution that I have for you and a few things I wanna go over before you decide if you should turn your bike into a mullet as well. So here, I've got my 180 millimeter Fox 38 that came off of the Clash. What many people don't account for when it comes to mulleting a bike, one, the fork travel, and two, the change in wheel size. So the distance from here on your axle all the way down to the bottom of your wheel. It's safe to assume that it's approximately a 20 millimeter change between a 27.5 and a 29 when you have the same tire. So what that means is that just the wheel size change alone accounts for 20 millimeters in height, which is gonna slacken your head angle and C-tube angle by a degree. And in addition to that, it's gonna raise up your bottom bracket. Both of those characteristics can dramatically affect the ride handling of your bike, so you wanna be sure to take that into account. However, many people, they wanna to change to a mullet and they might even be encouraged to try to increase the fork travel of their bike. Instead though, you actually wanna do the opposite. So here on my Clash with the 29 inch wheel up front, instead of having 180 like I did before, now I actually have 160. So that accounts for the 20 millimeter change in height from the wheel and then drops it 20 mil in fork length travel. That way it doesn't affect my geometry too much. It also worked out super well because I already had this fork. It came directly off my e-bike. On my e-bike, I also have Shimano brakes, so the rotor and everything fit right on, and it was a really easy swap for me to test out on the Clash just in case I didn't like it. If you're not familiar, swapping over to a mullet setup can be super expensive. The fork alone is gonna cost a thousand bucks, 1300 bucks, depending on the fork that you get, and then the wheel is gonna be anywhere from 200 to 600, depending on if you go carbon and the type of hub you want so it's important to get it right the first time before you go through all the expense and time switching it over and trying to convert your bike just to find out that you actually made a mistake speaking of mistakes there's one really important thing that i learned with my e-bike i changed the fork from a 36 millimeter to a 38 millimeter diameter and what i didn't account for is that in addition to the fork travel change that i made from 150 mil to 160 mil it actually also increases in length because your axle to crown length and if you're not familiar that's from the axle all the way up to the crown, which is where the bottom of the fork meets the bottom of your head tube. If you're not familiar, you can find this information on RockShox website or from Fox, and you can review all of their charts that they have based on the fork travel length and the type of fork that you have, the axle to crown. So whenever you're looking to purchase a new fork, you wanna make sure that you take that into account. Based on what I saw, Fox 36 compared to Fox 38, and Zebs compared to Lyrics, they're approximately a five millimeter difference. So if you plan to go from a 150 mil Fox 36 to a 160 mil Fox 38, and you're expecting half a degree in head angle from a 10 millimeter rise, you actually need to account for a little bit more than that because it's going to result in a rise of about 15 mil instead, and that's also going to increase the height of your bottom bracket. That increased height in your bottom bracket can be detrimental to the overall performance of these bikes. Remember, the designers and engineers have put a lot of thought into getting these bikes dialed from the factory. So you can get away with subtle changes sometimes and it won't ruin the handling characteristics of the bikes, but if you try to go too crazy with it, it can seriously affect the handling and it can turn your great bike into a not so great bike. All right, we're about to get to the trail in my overall review on what I think of my mulleted Clash. But before we do that, there's one more thing I had to take into account. As I mentioned, I decreased in fork travel from 180 millimeters to 160 millimeters. Generally speaking, that's going to affect the overall feel and performance of the bike. So 180 mil is generally a really plush and soft ride. The 160 is noticeably stiffer. So I wanted to make sure that I accounted for that across the entire bike, which means I needed to match the shock feel to the fork. Fortunately on the Clash, it comes with this really awesome flip chip 
that doesn't affect the geometry, but instead affects the feel of the rear shock. So as I mentioned in the bike check, I had my flip chip set in the sensitive position, which is common sauce term for more linear suspension travel. Now I've switched it to the responsive mode, which means it has a more progressive curve as the shock is moving through its travel, which also means it'll result in a stiffer ride, which should better mimic the fork travel that I've reduced in the front to account for the 29er. I was super surprised even just riding around in the parking lot when I flipped that chip how much of a difference it makes. It used to have a really soft plush ride and when I would compress the shock it wouldn't really give me a whole lot of pop. But now in the responsive mode it's night and day difference. It's a lot firmer feeling immediately in the middle of the travel all the way through till the end. It's a lot harder to blow through the suspension travel and bottom out the shock and I even took some pressure out of the shock in order to account for it so that way I was still sitting at proper sag. All right that's enough of me talking about the nitty-gritty specifics of switching over to a mullet. Hopefully now you know what you should look out for but Clash is all set up and ready to go. Let's go hit the trail. As always, we've got some climbing to do. So we've got the Zeb on now and first impressions on the climb. Can't really tell too much of a difference, to be honest. Fortunately, the Clash has a really steep seat tube angle. So that helps a lot with keeping the bike balanced well. Doesn't feel like the front end is floating around much. Anyways, I got a thousand foot climb to do here. We're headed up to DH Lago in Coli Barici outside Vicenza. I just rode it two days ago with the 27.5 up front. So let's go check it out and see how this 29er up front feels. I'm super excited for it. It's gonna be a good time. Two things that I forgot to mention in my bike check. One, the Clash is a very heavy all aluminum bike. In current form with the Zeb Ultimate 29er downhill tire up front, it is 17.1 kilograms, the equivalent of 37.76 pounds. This is by far the heaviest bike I've ever owned. And you can feel that when you're going up the climbs, even when you're pedaling on flatter or rolling terrain. That being said, for what it is, 170 free ride bike, it pedals relatively efficiently. It's reasonable. I can't complain too much. You just got to get that weight all the way up the hill. Second thing that I forgot to mention, it does not come with bottle cage mounts, which is a major bummer. Right now, when I'm going on short local loops, I don't even bring water with me. I just get through and muscle it out because I hate carrying a pack. I told myself I would never own a bike again without water bottle mount, but here I am. The class was just too appealing and too beautiful. Anyways, we're at the top. Time to go downhill and feel out how this 29er is up front. I'm really excited about it. DH Lago starts off with some high speed chatter and then some steeps followed by some flow. Perfect for testing this 29er. Oh man, holy cow, it feels so much faster already. Wow. Woo. Oh my god. This bike shreds. Woo. I did not make it far. Guys, I can't stress it enough. This bike just turned into a race machine. It wants to go so fast. It doesn't even feel like the same bike anymore. I'm not exaggerating at all. It feels a lot more similar to my Genius now, but it's a lot more quick to come around in the rear. And in addition to that, the weight of this bike really helps it just charge full speed ahead and it gives a ton of confidence and it is planted and it knows exactly where it wants to go. Let's go hit the trail. I'm excited to hit the steeps, followed by some flow and then some more chunky rock. Whew. Wow, I was not expecting this. And here it gets real gnarly. Wow, this bike is confidence inspiring. Now we got some flow. That 27.5 in the rear, Shrelp in the corners. A little jump to a drop. High speed here into some chatter again. Oh my God, this bike is fast. Oh. 
wow. I feel like I just unlocked a new level. So there you have it, guys. I can't believe it. It's like a completely different bike now. It literally doesn't even feel the same at all. I lost a lot of that plushness that it used to have, especially by switching to shorter travel in the front and to more progressive in the rear with that flip chip. But holy cow, it makes all the difference in the world. And this bike went from feeling like it was just a free ride park bike to have fun with to being a full on racing machine. As long as you can deal with the weight of it, this bike is fast. And that 27.5 in the rear, I really appreciate it. I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it because on my e-bike, which is a mullet setup from the factory, I didn't really like it. I, the 29 front feels like it turns slower than the rear. And this bike though, the Clash, it feels dialed. It doesn't really feel like I have two different wheel sizes and it feels really well balanced. This bike is just solid all around. In 27.5 form, at my height and everything else, in my riding style, which is I like to go fast, I wasn't too sure if I was gonna like this bike enough to keep it long term. Now that I've converted it, <laughs> I don't think this bike is going anywhere. I'm super excited about it. Man, oh, this is, this is some good stuff. And I'm excited for this year. Planning on just having a ton of fun riding. I'm not gonna be trying to do a whole lot of races. I mainly just wanna be crushing park laps and checking out a ton of really cool places here in Europe. So let's see what the rest of the year has in store for us. But if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and tell me where to ride next.